So, following the timeline, the new feature team has been announcement, Lena 3.5 the beta is now here with a good number of features including an interesting last minute call feature which would aid creators make stuff in Blender faster. With Blender 3.5 currently in beta across all platforms which includes Windows, Mac and Linux, you'd also notice that a very early version of Blender 3.6 is currently in alpha which means that there is literally no feature currently available for this except the nodes and physics which has only one tiny feature but Blender 3.5 on the other hand is pre-ready for prime time as it's officially available for everyone to download, play with and report bugs for bug fixing and future troubleshooting. And for those who like to try this, you can simply go over to blender.org, hit the download button, scroll all the way down, go over to where you get download Blender Experimental. It is worth mentioning that across this entire platform, Windows seems to be the only platform that is safe. If you have Mac or Linux, you may want to consider taking a look at some of the criteria that you might be needing to run Blender 3.5. And like we mentioned in previous videos, Blender 3.5 will now be compatible with the VFX platform of 2023. For animation and rigging, the only thing that you can now do with actions containing poses is to convert them to pose asset. There's an entire blog that talks about how you can do that, and in terms of the asset browser and pose library, some pose library functionalities in the asset browser have been moved to a new menu set. And in the viewport, a few options has also been removed as the option to create pose assets are no longer available on the viewport. Instead, you will now find these things within the action editor in the asset browser. If you like to flip poses, right now, you can easily do that by simply holding down the control key when blending. And for those who like to exaggerate a certain pose, you need to simply tap the E key on the keyboard as you can now apply poses more than 100%. The graph editor is also having a bit of an update, and just like we have with every other animation tool, right now, a brand new operator that deals with ease is now available for Blender's graph editor. This can align keys on an exponential curve, as this is pretty useful for quickly making an easing transition on multiple keys. The pose mode has also gotten a new update, which deals with the propagate pose operator. So previously, it evaluated F curves individually to find the target curve and this resulted to undesired behaviors, but right now, this simply finds the frame first by checking all F curves and then propagates the pose to it. And moving on, let's talk about pipeline asset and input output. So OBJ is getting a pretty new update to it. Previously, we talked about the fact that OBJ import and export has gotten a rewrite, which makes OBJ importing faster. And right now, the OBJ importer has gotten a split by object and split by group. At the same time, the OBJ importer can now import polylines with more than two vertices and the exporter is 1.6 times faster as the folks at Blender Foundation have removed the incorrect edge recalculation which has now made the OBJ exporter faster. And in terms of asset, there is a new set of asset that is now available in Blender 3.5. And with Blender 3.5, the beta opened right here, you would notice that we have a brand new splash screen. A huge shout out to Nicole for making this beautiful splash screen possible. And once we dive right in, the very first thing I would like you guys to notice is if you go over to edit, go all the way to preference, right here within the file path, you would notice that the asset libraries can now be set up as list. So you no longer need to go over and, you know, put some directory like we used to have before. Right now you can set them up as list. And this is going to make so much sense because you can now simply scroll through in case you're finding any of this. Now, once we close that and go all the way to your asset browser, so if we switch over and get to the asset browser, you would now notice that we have a brand new set of hair assets, which are now considered as essentials. So if we click on the drop down, you notice they're set to essentials. And from here, you would also see that we have a set of categories that the hair exists as. So we do have the deformation, generation, guides, read, utility, and also write. So depending on the kind of hair that you're trying to create, you would definitely find something quite useful here. Now, before we start talking about the hair, let's actually explore with something. So if we hit shift and tap here on the keyboard, if you go over to the curve section, we now have four, which means we can now add four automatically to any object that we have selected. So with this object right here, you would see that we have a set of geometry nodes, which I would suggest that you explore with. Now, the question is, how do you get to play with this hair alongside these ones? So to do that is super simple. I'm just going to go ahead and select that and we'll tap X on the keyboard and get rid of that. We can now add our very own. So we're going to select the object, hold down shift and tap A, go all the way to empty hair and add an empty hair. So with empty hair here, we can simply click and drag all the way out and we can switch these to geometry nodes. So within the geometry nodes, we can start doing some very interesting stuff. 
So first off, we can choose to deform the curves on the hair, and we can also choose to do some very cool stuff. Now you remember that when we deal with hair, what we used to do, once we have an empty, is to go over to the object section, go all the way to where you have your sculpt, and you can start sculpting. But now you can actually do some very interesting things by going over to the deformation and you can deform that. You can also go over to generation and generate any of the hair that you've created. You can also choose to play with the guides. So for the guides, if we simply click on the clump, click and drag all the way and connect this in between, if we click, you would notice that we've got something. So we're getting clumps right after the deformation on the curve. So we can have that. Actually, we can even select that and mute it and this would still work. So we can just wire this all the way in and this would still work. So if you're thinking about adding clumps to your hair, you now have a node that can make that possible. So other things that you can do is we can also select that and simply mute it. And you notice that we have the hair like this. We can drag the braids and drag that right in and we can connect this too. And you notice as well that we're having braids. All of these geometry nodes are set up in a way where you can go in and edit them however you choose. So we can have this right here and if we drag this all the way up, let's get this up, you can play with any of these parameters that exist and you can do some very fun stuff. So with the braids here, we can even add some more braids. I can just go ahead and add some braids. If you like to comb them, you can use the combing tool. Let's tap F on the keyboard, scale this all the way up and we can comb the braids however you want. Of course, you're not going to notice the braids here because we are still in our sculpt mode. If we switch over to object mode, you start noticing the braids. So this is like the very early age of this. Well, I probably make a video about how you can work with this, but so far so good. This is looking very interesting and you can go ahead and start playing with it right now. Cycles now have a pretty interesting update. The light sampling is now available in Cycles as Cycles now uses the light tree to more efficiently sample scenes with many lights. This will significantly reduce noises. The idea here is for you to get the most out of your rendering as the light tree simply works better once you have a physically correct lighting within your scene. Additionally, materials with emission now have a new emission sampling which replaces the previous multiple important sampling toggle. Open shader language can now be used with Optis on a GPU, and this is in addition to the existing support with CPU rendering. And for changes, there's an improved adaptive sampling for overexposed scenes, which reduces render time by taking into account absolute light intensities. Although this can negatively affect some scenes when compositing or color management are used to make a scene much more darker or brighter. And for bug fixes, there is a very tiny bug fix that deals with the anisotropic BSDF with Beckham roughness using isotropic sampling. So far, so good. Light sampling is something that is pretty interesting to see in cycles. And the fact that we're getting a little bit of an update in terms of bug fixing for cycles and the open shader language now being available for GPU in addition to the existing CPU rendering now makes cycles a bit more useful for most users. Risk Pencil on the other hand is having a little update to it. The Sculpt Auto Masking has now been moved to a global setting. There is also a brand new addition of an Auto Masking Pie menu which you can now access by hitting Shift Alt and A on the keyboard for masking several stuff. And in terms of animation, interplay sequence by default can now use all different keyframe types as extremes and a new option which excludes the breakdown has now been added to allow users exclude these types of keyframes from their interpolation as with old behaviors. And for copy and pasting, this now works across multi-frames. Now these alongside some UI updates are now available for Grease Pencil users and for modifiers, there's a brand new Add Offset modifier which allows you offset certain parts of your object based off location, rotation and scale. And this has an interesting advanced mode which allows you work either by layer, stroke or material. And for what it's worth, if you're thinking about animating this, you can actually use the offset modifier to animate some very interesting stuff when creating your animation. Additionally, for Grease Pencil, there is a new natural draw speed mode which is now found in the build modifier. Now this comes with a timing property that allows for a replay of drawing using the recorded speed of the stylus giving it a much more natural feel. So for all of those documentations and showreels you now have an interesting modifier that you can use to show how the process of your creation actually is. Geometry Nodes is having a couple of new updates to it. So there's a new set of modifiers now available in Geometry Nodes. There is a new image information node that simply retrieves various information about an image. There's also a new image input node. There's a blur attribute node which is pretty interesting to see. And there's also a brand new store named attribute node 
then I can now store to the vector attributes. Additionally, the image texture node also has a new mirror extension type, which you can work with. Drag and drop is now supported for geometry nodes, as you can now easily drag asset groups into the viewport. And for curve, there's a new interplate curve mode, which allows generating child curves between a set of guides. And for meshes, there's an interesting set of updates that you will find there. And once we go over to the node editor, the node editor is now faster and has a much more significant improvement in terms of loading and having access to the nodes. For copy and pasting, nodes are now placed at the mouse position rather than their original location. So at any point in time you copy a node, once you position your mouse where you like to paste this, you can now easily paste them. Something that I'm pretty excited about with the whole new node stuff is working with multiple nodes and when you're trying to flip them back and forth. So you know where you have a node in a certain section and you like to flip them back and forth. Right now, it is super easy to swap this node by simply holding down Alt while connecting or reconnecting your node to a previous node. And when we talk about nodes and physics, Cloud Simulation is having an update. Self-collision when working with closed simulations have now been optimized with over 25% overall frame per second gain. So when your clothes are collapsing across each other, or maybe you're having like self-collision when working with clothes and doing your cloud simulation, you'll probably be having a faster and a much more better result compared to what you had previously. So within last two weeks, there was an interesting update that we all saw, and this is making all of the rounds that it should. And that is the support for VDM brushes that you can now play with in Blender. So we already made a video about that, explained how you can work with the VDM brushes, how you can export VDM brushes that you have in ZBrush over to Blender and how you can work with it. And to me, this is a very interesting update to have in Blender. So for those who are thinking about working with VDMs, this is a brand new, cool, interesting feature that you can now have access to. There is also a demo file which you can find. I'm also going to link that in the description where you can check that one out as well and see all of the cool and nice things that you might want to play with. It's pretty interesting to see that VDM is now available in Blender and the fact that it is super easy to work with makes it even way more joyful. And with it making the 3.5 update, I would love to see more and more VDM assets come over to Blender and see how creators would use this to their benefit and create things faster with it. And for the user manual, there has been a couple of major updates and rewrites for many parts of the user manual in terms of documentation for the sculpting tool. So for those who are thinking about reading up on that, you can go ahead and check it out. And while we still talk about sculpting, they've added an extrude mode for trim tools. So if you're working with the trim tools, there is now an extrude mode which you can play with and you can use this while sculpting in Blender. So these are the major updates that we're getting with 3.5. Although sometime within the year, we all anticipated that real-time composition was going to come over to Blender 3.5. But now within the beta, we are not seeing anything. And I kind of believe that they are saving this for a big review. I believe 3.5 should be a milestone as it gets to keep us on a stable ground and prepare us for things coming over to 4.0. And for those who would like to take a look at some of the things that are available for core, within the core section, we literally have just very cosmetic updates within the modeling, the same thing. We're also getting just very minimal things that has to do with, you know, performances. And Python, API, and text also have a couple of interesting stuff that you might want to check out. The EV and the viewport has nothing. We also get to see that within the user interface, we are not necessarily getting a lot of things, except for the fact that the font previews are now differentiated better between Korean, Japanese, simplified, and also traditional Chinese. And in most cases, if you're thinking about playing with add-ons, there are a couple of add-ons that are currently available that you can play with, which includes the Story Pencil, Rigify, some position, and the contribute repository. And more likely than none, if you're into the video sequence editor, you might want to consider taking a look at some of the interesting updates that are now here. And for tracking, you might want to check out the optical center in motion tracking. So this is it. All of this alongside links to the VDM, real-time compositor, and also a couple of things that we've talked about that made it to Blender 3.5 and the ones that we haven't seen in Blender 3.5, or probably we guess might be coming to Blender 3.5 or 3.6 are going to be in the description so do well to check them out tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section blender 3.5 the beta is now here and for those who like to explore with it test it and report bugs are welcome to do so and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and i'd like to see you guys in the next one peace